Little Red Riding Hood by the Brothers Grimm. Once upon a time, there was a sweet little girl who was loved by everyone who ever laid eyes on her, but most of all by her grandmother, and there was nothing that she wouldn't have given to the child. Once she gave her a hood of red velvet, which suited her so well that she would never wear anything else. So she became to be called Little Red Riding Hood. One day her mother said to her, Come, Little Red Riding Hood, here is a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother. She is ill and weak, and they will do her good. Be on your way before it gets hot, and when going, walk nicely and quietly, and don't run off the path, or you may fall and break the bottle, and then your grandmother will have nothing. And when you go into her room, don't forget to say good morning, and don't peep in every corner. I will take good care, said Little Red Riding Hood to the mother, and gave her hand on it. The grandmother lived out in the woods, a mile from the village, and just as Little Red Riding Hood entered the woods, she met the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked creature that was, and wasn't afraid of him. Good day, Little Red Riding Hood, said he. Thank you kindly, wolf. Whither so early? Little Red Riding Hood to Grandmother's. What have you got in your apron? Cake and wine. Yesterday we baked, so poor sick Grandmother is to have something good to make her stronger. Where does your Grandmother live? Little Red Riding Hood. A good mile farther on in the wood. Her house stands under the three large oak trees. The nut hedges are just below. You surely must know it, replied Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf thought to himself, What a tender young creature! What a choose morsel! She will be better to eat than the old woman. I must act craftily so as to catch both. For a short while he walked side by side with Little Red Riding Hood. Then he said, See, Little Red Riding Hood, how pretty the flowers are. Why don't you take a look around? I believe you don't hear how sweetly the birds are singing. You walk gravely along, as if going to school while everything else here in the woods is merry. Little Red Riding Hood raised her eyes, and when she saw the sunbeams dancing here and there through the trees and pretty flowers growing everywhere, she thought, Suppose I take Grandmother a fresh nosegay. That will please her too. It is so early in the day that I shall still get there in good time. So she left the path into the woods and began looking for flowers. And whenever she had picked one, she saw a still prettier one farther on, and whilst running after them, got deeper and deeper into the woods. Meanwhile, the wolf ran straight to Grandmother's house and knocked at the door. Who is there? Little Red Riding Hood, replied the wolf. She is bringing cake and wine. Open the door. Lift the latch, called out Grandmother. I am too weak and cannot get up. The wolf lifted the latch. The door sprang open, and without saying a word, he went straight to Grandmother's bed and devoured her. Then he put on her clothes donned her bonnet, went to bed, and drew the curtains. Little Red Riding Hood, however, had been running about picking flowers, and when she had gathered so many that she could carry no more, 
she remembered her grandmother and set out on the way again. She was surprised to find the cottage door standing open, and when she went inside, she had such a strange feeling so that she said to herself, Oh dear, how uneasy I feel today, and at other times I like being with grandmother so much. She called out, Good morning, but received no answer. So she went to the bed and drew back the curtains. There lay her grandmother with her bonnet pulled deep into her face and looking strangely. Oh, grandmother, she said, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with my child, was the reply. But grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said. All the better to see you with, my dear. But grandmother, what large hands you have. All the better to hug you with. Oh, but grandmother, what a terribly big mouth you have. All the better to eat you with. And scarcely had the wolf said this. He was out of bed with a chump and gulped down poor little Red Riding Hood. As the wolf had up eased his appetite, he laid down again in the bed, fell asleep and began to snore very loud. <coughs> the huntsman was just passing the house and thought to himself, how the old woman is snoring. I must just see if she needs anything. So he went into the house and when he came to the bed, he saw that the wolf was lying in it. Do I find you here, you old sinner, he said. I have long sold after you. But just as he was going to shoot the wolf, it occurred to him that the wolf might have devoured the grandmother and that she might still be saved. So he did not fire, but took a pair of scissors and began to cut open the stomach of the sleeping wolf. After a couple of cuts, he saw the red hood shining. A few more cuts, and the little girl sprang out crying, Oh, how frightened I have been! It was so dark inside the wolf's stomach. After that, the aged grandmother also came out alive, but was scarcely able to breathe. Little Red Riding Hood, however, quickly fetched large stones with which they filled the wolf's belly, and when he awoke, he wanted to run away. But the stones were so heavy that he collapsed at once and fell dead to the ground. Then all three were jolly. The huntsmen drew off the wolf's skin. They ate the cake and drank the wine which Little Red Riding Hood had brought. But Red Riding Hood thought to herself, As long as I live, I will never leave my path to run into the woods if Mother forbid me to do so.